I would like first to thank the organizers to give me the opportunity to uh, make this presentation uh, in front of so a distinguished audience. So I'm going to, um, to talk about topics that has been uh, already uh, talked talk about this morning. It's uh, how to, uh, to cope with the uh, growing demand and uh, how to, um, to give a good service to uh, uh, customers and using the uh, approach we, we have in Paris with uh, RATP. Uh, so it's the summary of the presentation, but uh, before some words about uh, RATP Group. Um, as you know, RATP is the, operating, uh, uh, the operator of the uh, public transport system of the uh, Ile-de-France and Paris uh, region. But it's not only that, it's a group with, um, this were the figures of 2010. Uh, in 2011, we reached uh, 5 billion euros of uh, revenues. Uh, we are carrying every day 12 million passengers and uh, especially 10 million in, uh, in Paris. And we have uh, 56,000 uh, employees. So the, uh, the expertise of uh, <coughs> RATP is, of course, to be uh, an expert in operating and, and maintenance of uh, transport modes. And uh, we have been these uh, experts since more than 100 years now. Uh, but we do also the uh, design uh, and infrastructure of our transport projects. We are the designer of the uh, new lines of metro and tramways in Paris, uh, in-house design. And through our subsidiary CISRA, we have designed and we are designing a lot of uh, metros and especially uh, the one of Dubai, the last one, but also uh, Santiago, uh, to name some of the uh, uh, participants of uh, today. We have also know-how in uh, management of area and spaces in, in metro environment and also to uh, design uh, services uh, for uh, passengers. So it's due to uh, more than 2,000 engineers and, uh, as I told, more than 100 years of operating metros. But uh, RATP is not only Paris, it's also a, a subsidiary RATP Dev. And RATP Dev, it's uh, 12,000 uh, employees uh, operating buses, metros, train and tramways in uh, 12 countries in four continents. So uh, today, uh, RATP in Paris, it's uh, a multimodal operator. Uh, with uh, 14 metro lines, uh, two uh, suburban trains, uh, three tram lines, and more than 300 buses. Uh, we are operating 5,000 buses in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Paris, and we are uh, serving uh, a zone of one, 11 million uh, residents. So, <clears throat> to, uh, to come to the uh, topic, uh, the challenge is uh, that we have uh, a growing demand, uh, a growing demand for uh, two reasons. Uh, first, the city, uh, perhaps not as quickly as London, but is still uh, expanding, and especially because uh, the urbanization uh, is characterized by the uh, sprawling of, of the inhib uh, inhabitation around the uh, heart of the city. And uh, because of perhaps uh, not too good about the urbanism, um, the uh, offices tend to be uh, built on the west part of the region, whereas the habitations are built more in the east part. So it means uh, more regional orbital uh, mass transport uh, solutions. And first there, and second, there is a transfer to public uh, transport for several reasons. Uh, first being the uh, road congestion, congestion and traffic problems. Uh, the second uh, is the also the uh, economic uh, crisis and, uh, and with the uh, price of uh, fuel, a lot of households are uh, going to uh, public transport instead of using cars. And also, uh, less, uh, less one, among young people, a more eco-friendly culture. Uh, people are looking more at using uh, environmental uh, positive uh, transportation. So it means that uh, uh, the number <coughs> of uh, passengers is increasing uh, steadily uh, on our different modes. For example, uh, we have uh, roughly uh, uh, I told you 10 million uh, passengers a day, which is uh, uh, 3 billion a year. And between two, uh, two, uh, 2000 to uh, last year, the increase of passengers per year is uh, more than 30%. Uh, 
for example, if you take line A, the uh, RER line from west to east, in 2000, we had 10 days in the year with more than 1 million passengers. <coughs> Last year, we had 200 days with more than 1 million passengers. And uh, so it means that uh, uh, some of our routes of metro lines, and I, I'm thinking especially of three uh, main lines, and our uh, train lines become to, uh, to be saturated at uh, peak uh, period. So our main challenge is first how to cope with this increase of, uh, cap of uh, demand and how to, uh, uh, to fight against saturation. And secondly, how to uh, better uh, serve and satisfy more and more passengers and during, especially during these uh, peak periods. So to, uh, to uh, answer the, uh, these uh, challenges, uh, we have uh, five different uh, ways uh, that you can see it. The first is creating new infrastructures uh, which is the uh, most expensive and that takes the uh, longest time. The second is densifying the capacities. Afterwards is to uh, build uh, a more uh, a culture among the employees that is uh, more centered towards uh, customer service. Uh, it's to develop IT services, especially for ticketing and information. And finally, to, uh, to um, give a better service to uh, what we have called to customize the user's experience. So for uh, creating new infrastructures, we have uh, roughly two directions. Uh, the first is uh, what we are doing right now. It's uh, to build around Paris 75 kilometers of light rail uh, with extension and new lines. We are also ex expanding our uh, metro lines and we are building four extensions towards the uh, suburbs uh, for 10 kilometers. We are creating also BRT lines. So it's, uh, it means, and creating three hubs. So we are, we are working right now with in-house uh, engineering on uh, nearly 20 uh, projects. And something which is not uh, very well known is the fact that uh, uh, next year, we are going to have 100 kilometers of tramways in, in Paris. We have uh, already 33, but uh, 100 kilometers uh, for uh, nearly 800,000 passengers uh, per day on these uh, tramway lines that go from suburb to a suburb. So it's uh, the first direction to, uh, to create this network of light rail uh, uh, side the backbone of the uh, metro and rail uh, network. The second direction is the uh, Grand Paris project. It's a project that has been launched by uh, President Sarkozy with the uh, help of the uh, Region Ile de France. And the idea is the, uh, to connect the major uh, economic uh, uh, centers, points of, of the uh, region, meaning the airports, uh, the universities, also the business uh, district like uh, La Défense with um, a suburb to suburb connection. And it's a 130 kilometers project with 40 uh, station uh, driverless, uh, uh, non-attended uh, as we have in, <coughs> in Paris uh, network. Uh, that is, uh, will be operated uh, in 2025, all of it, and for a cost of 35 billion euros uh, project. So we are part of this uh, project uh, because we are one of the uh, organization enterprises that are doing the design, especially for uh, system and uh, operational uh, aspects. So it's the first uh, direction, building uh, new infrastructures. The second one is uh, to densify the capacities <coughs> uh, with two ways. Uh, first, the metro automation, and secondly, the ring stock design. So for metro automation, I think it's uh, figures that are well known right now, the benefits of uh, automation we have uh, learned uh, on line 14 that, was, that is operated uh, uh, since uh, 12 years. Uh, which has improved safety, uh, improved uh, regularity, uh, with a regularity of 99.8% uh, since 12 years, and with especially uh, one year with uh, 100%, and uh, less incident, and also 
uh, customer approval. <laughs> I have seen uh, some approval, and this line is 98.5% of uh, customer approval. So, uh, and of course, this uh, efficiency gives uh, more uh, ways to uh, accom accommodate more passengers. So it's the reason why <coughs> we have decided to uh, put together, as a, which is not uh, no longer a project, but it's right now implemented, <coughs> the automation of one existing metro line, which is line one, the historical line of Paris, the, uh, a uh, most populated one with, with 850,000 passengers a day. So we have migrated, uh, we have started the migration successfully in last December, and we have each month more uh, driverless uh, trains among uh, trains with uh, drivers, and all the uh, trains will be uh, driverless uh, at the end of 2012. So it's very difficult because we have to have at the same time <coughs> the two uh, system with driver and driverless. And the uh, idea is uh, to, uh, to uh, reduce the headway from uh, 100 f uh, 105 seconds to 85 seconds, which give us, which is not yet implemented, but in the future, will give us the uh, possibility uh, to increase uh, by 20% uh, the capacity of this, uh, of, this, uh, of this line, which is a huge way uh, to, um, to improve uh, the offer and to, uh, to uh, increase the offer. And uh, right now, we are thinking, not in the next future, but in, in the future, uh, to, we have not yet decided the dates to, uh, <coughs> to autom automatize another uh, existing uh, metro, metro line in order also to increase the, uh, the capacity. The second way <laughs> is to uh, design a new, uh, to have new design of ring stock uh, for more comfort and capacity. So we have done it in uh, metro, but especially on the RER where uh, I told you one million passengers a day and during uh, peak periods and with a central station in Paris with a lot of people going in and going out. So we have uh, designed double deck uh, trains with uh, a lot of doors and very large doors uh, in order to accommodate this uh, in and out flux, uh, very important in, in the stations in the center of Paris. The, sec the third way to, uh, <coughs> to try to cope with the high demand and to satisfy the, um, uh, the passengers is to create a customer-centric culture uh, within the employees, uh, which is uh, something very long and difficult, and especially in, in an old company like RATP, which, was, uh, which is still, but... Uh, which was at the beginning an engineer uh, company where the important thing was to have a uh, good operation. And afterwards, passengers uh, were the second uh, most important topic. And the idea is to, to put the, uh, the passengers in the center of, of, the, uh, uh, of the culture. And first, to, uh, to, um, uh, to redesign the frontline services in, in the stations. Uh, so it's a bit difficult for us because we have in Paris, uh, since we have a station every 500 meters, so we have uh, 350 uh, stations. Uh, some of them have been built 100 years ago, so it means it's not, they were not at all designed for, for this purpose. But step by step, we are transforming uh, the station to have open uh, offices uh, where the uh, employees are here to help and form and serve uh, customers. And we are creating, we have creating an academy, RATP Service Academy, to implement uh, this uh, customer uh, culture uh, among the, uh, the employees. And so also we, we, um, we are right now for the Grand Paris. We have commissioned uh, three uh, international architecture team, architects teams to, uh, to design uh, new stations, the idea of new stations that would uh, be uh, more efficient to, uh, to serve uh, uh, the uh, clientele with the possibilities of uh, uh, shopping and uh, of interaction uh, with the uh, life of the city. Um, a, a fourth a way of uh, <coughs> developing the uh, service is to develop IT services, uh, which is important on, on two ways. 
uh, for ticketing. As you may know, uh, RATP was the uh, creator of one of the first uh, smart car transport technology, uh, Navigo Pass. So we, we are going uh, from this uh, technology to a multi-channel uh, ticketing system uh, using, uh, um, for example, a cash dispenser uh, in, in, uh, in banks, but also, of course, uh, the uh, smartphones, uh, which is uh, uh, very uh, developed. And also the second uh, area where IT is very important, it's the, uh, <coughs> the information. And to have a very reactive passenger information ahead of time uh, before the travel uh, via internet and mobile phones, but also uh, in uh, uh, metro uh, station, train station and all uh, bus stops. Uh, and also very important to give information on each uh, way of transportation on, on the uh, connection on, on the others, for example, in metro to have information on buses and on uh, trains and, uh, and, uh, and, so, and so on. Uh, third way <laughs> is to uh, what we call to uh, uh, customize the user's experience, meaning that um, we are, uh, uh, of course, a mass transportation, and when you uh, carry 10 million passengers on the same network uh, each day, it's really mass transportation. But we, we uh, tend, which is very difficult, uh, to, uh, to transform it to a personal transport solution. So, for, for, of course, we are using uh, IT to, uh, uh, to integrate and personalize our services. Uh, first, we have created uh, or we are using the loyalty programs. Uh, we have uh, 1.9 million uh, pass holders and we have dedicated specific uh, branded programs uh, on specific uh, clientele, for example, this one, Imaginaire, is the card for uh, students. And uh, we have uh, special programs for them with, for example, invitation to concert or s special information uh, related to their study or related to their way of life. So it's, uh, and we have uh, several programs for different clienteles in order to create uh, loyalty to, uh, to, the, um, to, uh, to our company and also to uh, <coughs> increase because we, gave, uh, we give them ideas and uh, uh, to, to, to use uh, public transport. Uh, second thing is what we call uh, <coughs> interactive maps. It means that um, using IT and smartphone, uh, we use the uh, localization to give information uh, on, uh, on the point and on the uh, public transport system around the point where the uh, client is. The last one is more interesting. <coughs> it's what we call Gemaline, which is I love my line or I love my route. Uh, it's, it's something which is uh, related to a social network uh, operation and um, and people by this application have the possibility to uh, the ones that are using every day a bus line or a metro line to exchange with other users ideas and uh, good uh, uh, recommendation on a cafe restaurant or spots to get and and so there is a kind of community. Uh, created around the uh, uh, metro line or bus line in order also to, uh, to create a community and uh, to enhance uh, the, uh, um, uh, the use of uh, public transportation. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, this, uh, this challenge of uh, coping with uh, uh, growing demand and of uh, public uh, ser uh, service of the passengers uh, the main issue for us is uh, about uh, combination, uh, how it's uh, possible to, uh, to combine this growing demand uh, with the passenger's uh, satisfaction, and especially, uh, especially during the peak uh, periods, uh, how to uh, give more capacity without waiting for years uh, when you have to build new infrastructures, and uh, how uh, to, uh, to uh, design, to implement, and to build uh, this new uh, capacity uh, with uh, respect to uh, financial pressure and uh, to the needs of uh, our public uh, uh, authorities that uh, are not as, as generous as they used to, uh, to be uh, several years ago. 
so all these examples that uh, <coughs> we are um, trying to find solution in, uh, in Paris and uh, through uh, RATP Dev, our subsidiary, we are ready uh, to, uh, to give this example to uh, cities all over the world that uh, would like to, uh, to, use, to use these ways to, uh, to uh, face uh, the uh, challenges that we have seen this morning are the challenges of every uh, main city in the world. Thank you very much.